ट्रांसमिशन मीडिया कंप्यूटर ट्रांसमिशन मीडिया के इंक्लूड्स केबल एंड वायरलेस टेक्नोलॉजी अलाव वॉट नेटवर्क डिवाइसेज टू कनेक्ट वन अनादर ट्रांसमिशन मीडिया कैन नॉट गारंटी दैट अदर नेटवर्क डिवाइसेज विल अंडरस्टैंड अ मैसेज इट कैन हाव एवर गारंटी अ मैसेज डिलीवरी पाथ बेसिकली दिस ट्रांसमिशन मीडिया इज एक्चुअली द पाथ वेर आवर डेटा गोस सो इट इज नॉट गिविंग यू द गारंटी दैट दी डेटा मे बी माइट बी अंडरस्टैंड बाई दी अदर कंप्यूटर और अदर डिवाइसेज ट्रांसमिशन मीडियाज रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इज टू जस्ट ट्रांसफर द डेटा इट इज टू रीच द डेटा टू द डेस्टिनेशन सो इट इज ओनली गारंटी द डिलीवरी इट इज नॉट लाइक इट विल गारंटी दैट दी अदर डिवाइसेज विल अंडरस्टैंड इट सो फैक्टर्स टू बी कंसिडर्ड वाइल चूजिंग ट्रांसमिशन मीडियम सो वेन यू आर चूजिंग द ट्रांसमिशन ट्रांसमिशन मीडियम दीज आर दी सम फैक्टर्स यू हैव टू कंसिडर अबाउट लाइक ट्रांसमिशन रेट transmission rate like how much transmission rate we are getting how much speed we are getting then cost and ease of installation that is also important that how much cost it is taking because if suppose you are using that latest the highest technology to get the maximum transmission rate but it can be very costly and it can be very costly that you can you can afford so you have to take care about this also that is it uh affordable to you is it feasible to you to use that technology and also how easy to install also so it depends on you that how you feel that is it easy for me to installation and is it uh, easy for me to pay the cost so cost and ease of installations are also important then resistance to environmental conditions the speed the transmission rate which we get it can be impacted by the environmental conditions so the technology the transmission medium we are using we have to take care or we have to consider that what is the environmental condition what is the resistance it is getting from environmental conditions for example if you are using the wireless technology it is highly impacted by the environmental conditions so we have to choose depending on the environmental conditions also then how much resistance it can cover that is also important that we should know that how much distance it is going to be covered by this transmission medium so these are the some factors we should consider before choosing a transmission medium then computer network transmission modes so first the data is transmitted from one device to other another device through a transmission mode the transmission mode decides the direction of data in which the data needs to travel to reach the receiver system or node the transmission mode is divided in three categories simplex half duplex and full duplex so we have three categories which is simplex half duplex and full duplex first simplex mode in simplex mode the data transmit uh, transmit in one direction only and one and from one system to another system the sender device that sends data can only send data and cannot receive it on the other hand the received de receiver device can only receive the data and cannot send it television is an example of simple uh, simplex mode transmission as the broadcast sends signals to our tv but never receives signals back from our tv this is unidirectional transmission or even we can say the radio transmission also these are what simplex mode of transmission where only the one direction transmission will happen so sender will send the data and only send the data and receiver only receives the data it will never send it then we have half duplex in half duplex mode transmission can be done both ways which means if two systems are connected with half duplex mode of transmission they both can send and receive data but not the same not at the same time if one device is sending data then other device cannot send data until it receives the data which is already in transmission you can say that the trans the communication is not uh, simultaneously uh, see simultaneous and the radio communication device that our soldiers use at the battlefields are the examples of half duplex mode transmission as they send message and then they over and they then the person on the other hand send his uh, message and this way they communicate but 
not simultaneously like we used to do on mobile so the transmission the, the, the use of uh, radio devices if you see that uh, as it we can say the soldiers or our uh, uh, police departments they use these radio frequencies they, they, they use these uh, uh, radio devices to communicate to each other so what they use they actually use half duplex and there are there are there is some button there is one button on that device and when they press that button then they can send the data and they lose the when they uh, release the button they receive the data so what they do when they when they talked then when uh, one uh, person says something then after the uh, after he completes the sentence it say over then the other person knows that okay that person is over now i can say something so that other person will press the button and then it will say something and then it will say over so you have seen about this you have seen it that why those soldiers and policemen every time says over over every time whenever they say something and then they say over why they say over because they want to say the other person they want to say the other person that i am done with this i am done sending data now you can you can send the data so there is a button on that device and that is the simplest this is an example of half duplex then we have full duplex now in full duplex system we can send data in both the directions as it is bi bidirectional at the same time in other words data can be sent in both directions simultaneously examples of full duplex is a telephone network in which there is communication between two persons by a telephone line and using which both can talk and receive at the same time so this is what bidirectional data of uh, bidirectional of communication where both the data data can be sent and receive at the same time by the sender and receiver and both will be sender and receiver like we are using the telephone lines we call and we use the telephone line to say something and also we used to listen also at the same time that is the communication of full duplex now in full duplex system there can be two lines there can be two lines for sending the data and the other receiving other for the receiving the data so to make it suppose if it is a half duplex so make it a full duplex it could be a two lines for it like one is only for sending and other one is only for receiving in that case it is becomes the full duplex communication so in some systems for example even in the mobile also telephone line we have some uh, four lines there uh, four cables there where some cables are dedicated to sending and some cables are dedicated to receiving so practically it is actually half duplex but because it is a system so combi combined system it is what full duplex where you can send and receive uh, voice data at the same time simultaneously but if you see closely then it is what actually doing half duplex with two lines one for sending and another one for receiving so full duplex means at the same time we can send the data also and we can receive the data and we can achieve this by using two lines also one is for sending and other one is for receiving now transmission mediums in computer network data is represented by computers and other telecommunication devices using signals signals are transmitted in the form of electromagnetic energy from one device to another electromagnetic signals travel through vacuum air or other transmission medium to move from one point to another from sender to receiver electromagnetic energy includes electric and magnetic fields so consist of power voice visible light radio waves ultraviolet light gamma rays etc so transmission medium is the means through which we send our data from one place to other the first layer that is called physical layer of communication network osi system osi 7 layer model is dedicated to the transmission media we will study this osi layer later the whole network is actually depend on this osi layer like how the data will go from one device to other device 
the whole thing is defined under this OSI model. So in that model, we have a layer called physical layer. That layer actually defines this transmission medium. So how and what, how and what transmission mediums are there and how they work. This all, this, these all things are decided under this physical layer. So there are two types of transmission media, guided or wired, that means transmission media in guided which, is, uh, which can be seen physically and has a proper bounded channel to flow the signal and the types of uh, this uh, wired transmission medias are twisted pair cable, coaxial cable and optical fiber cable. In this we can see the wire because where we uh, proper where we uh, put the wire, where we put the wire, the data will go only that direction. So it is called guided. Now unguided or wireless where we don't have any wires. So wireless transmission media is the one which uh, in which data signals get transmitted through the air and they are not guided or bound to a channel to follow. Because there is no wires and there is no uh, direction we have so it is actually called unguided and in this transmission media we have radio wave or microwave the signals goes with the radio wave or microwaves through radio wave or microwave because there is no wires so this is the transmission media guided and unguided now under the uh, guided media we have this twisted pair fiber optics coaxial and unguided media, we have radio wave, microwave and even an infrared. Now infrared, nobody uses the infrared because of the, uh, the limitations of infrared. Uh, infrared uh, cannot go for the long distance and it is also very slow. And uh, these radio wave or microwave, we have for this wireless technology. Now guided media, we have these uh, Coaxial, fiber optics and twisted pair are uh, twisted. Now in coaxial we have two types. We have baseband which is also called thick net and broadband which is also called thin net. Then we have in twisted pair also we have two types that is unshielded or shielded. Unshielded it is, it is also called UTP that means unshielded twisted pair and shielded means uh, it is also called STP that is shielded twisted pair. So these are the transmission media type we have and the first one we have is twisted pair cable. Now the twisted pair cable uses copper wire as telecommunication cable and because the copper is such a good conductor of electrons, copper wires do not constrain electromagnetic signals well. So twisted the copper wires reduce crosstalk and signals emissions which intervened strand, uh, strand conducts a current which is omitted waves or cancelled out by the other wires emission. So there are two types of twisted pair cables that is shielded twisted pair and unshielded twisted pair. And why it is called twisted pair? Because the two cables are twisted together like this you see in the image. They are twisted together and to, to, to reduce the emission, signal emission and crosstalk. They are twisted because they want to reduce the crosstalk and emission of signal. So one wire, uh, one wire's uh, emission of the signal cancelled out the other wire's emission signal because of uh, signal's emission because they are twisted together. So they look like this insulation, the cable insulation and under that you will see the copper wire conductor. Now in this also we have two types, shielded and unshielded. As the name suggests, one is shielded and other one is not shielded. But both look same, both have the same wires, but only the difference is what one is shielded and other one is not shielded. So first, shielded two-state pair, that is called STP. So these two state pair cables are often shielded in an attempt to prevent electromagnetic interference. And because the shielding is made of metal, it may also serve as a ground and usually a shielded or screened uh, twisted pair cable has a special grounding wire added called a drain wire which is electrically contact connected to the shield or screen. The drain wire simplifies connection to ground at the connector and it looks like this in the image you can see 
there are two straight wires two wires to stay together and we have four pairs of wires four pairs of wires and we can say we have total eight wires and each pair is to is shielded with this uh, metal it is actually aluminium so it is uh, met uh, it is shielded by this uh, and it will it is what it is twisted together so we have eight wires and we can say four pairs of wires twisted together and shielded now this is shielded but the unshielded is also same only the shielding is not there and also this shield can be used as a ground so in this it used as a ground so ground wire so that it simplifies the connection and the uh, in this twisted pair now the so the functionality of the twisted pair is the speed and throughput is 10 to 100 mbps you will get then average cost per node is moderately expensive it is expensive media in connector size is medium to large then maximum cable length is 100 meter this is the distance it can go up to 100 meters maximum so what is the advantages of twisted pair shielded twisted pair cable it is easy to install performs a uh, performance is adequate and can be used for analog and digital transmission both increase the signal rate higher capacity than unshielded to state pair and eliminates the crosstalk now there is some disadvantages also now this advantages are like it is difficult to manufacture and it is heavy because of the shielding the wire gets heavier also because you are getting some extra metal in that now the uh, other hand we have unshielded twisted pair cable now this unshielded twisted pair it is the most common type of telecommunication when compared with the shielded twisted pair cable which consists of two conductor usually copper with each with its own color plastic insulator identification is the reason behind colored plastic insulation so you will see that insulation is the color uh, is in color these four wires four pairs and each pair, each pair has two cables so utp cable consists of two or four pairs of twisted cable and cable with two pairs use rj11 connector and four pair cable uses the rj45 connector and these wires are in colors they are only they are oh, they are they are in color because of the identification because when we try to connect the connector in this cable and even in the uh, shielded to state where the colors are the same so when we try to connect the connector the connectors are two types of connectors if we are using the four wires uh, cable then it is rj11 it is used and for the four pairs two pairs use rj11 and for four pairs this is rj45 connector were used now two pairs that means four wires and four pairs means eight wires two pairs basically used for the telephone lines analog signals and these four pairs of wires used for the data communication for the digital network for the digital communications mostly now these wires are in colors because of the identification because when we try to connect the connector to this these uh, cable then we have to arrange the these cables according to the standard model and that color will help us to arrange this cable so utp that means unshielded twisted pair is commonly used in telephone systems and it is widely available and has been largely standardized the electrical standard industries association that is eia popularized the a category ke labeling scheme for five different qualities of twisted pair cables so in twisted pair cables we have five categories from cat 1 to cat 6 and it is also called cat why because of category so it is also called category cable and also we can say in short cat cable so first the category 1 and the category 2 these cables were used for voice and low speed data less than or equal to 4 mbps basically category 1 was only for using for voice
in category 1 cable there was no option to send the digital data it was only used for voice communication for telephone lines but from category 2 cables now we can send a low speed data also a digital signal also less than or equal to we can say 4 mbps then category 3 cable came now the category 3 cable can send the data that is digital signal and typically from 10 to 16 mbps and although 100 mbps is also possible it is not it is not uh, defined in the uh, it is not defined actually but we can logically send 100 mbps then category 4 data uh, category 4 cable can also it is also for data and less than or equal to 1020 mbps it is defined then we have category 5 it is for high speed data less than or equal to 100 mbps and used for 100 base tx now what this 100 base tx it is the standard for ethernet network it is the standard for ethernet network set by the ieee and we will see this standard also in next lectures in upcoming lectures then category 5e it is e for enhanced it gets the high it is for the high speed data less than or equal to 100 mbps and used for 1000 base t this is also a uh, standard for the uh, this is also a standard of ethernet network so it can go up to 1000 means uh, actually 5e can go up to more than 100 mbps it can go up to 350 uh, mbps or we can say uh we can put uh, we can take this to go up to 1000 mbps also so it can go up to 1 gbps also that is why it is used for 1000 base t it is for 1 gbps network then category 6 cable it is for also high speed data and less than or equal to 200 250 mbps it can go up to 1000 mbps it is also for 1000 mbps used for 1000 base t also so this is also for the 1000 mbps it can go less than 250 mbps and up to maximum it can go up to 1000 mbps now what is the advantages of using the unshielded to state pair first the installation is easy flexible cheap it has high speed capacity 100 meters uh, limit the same limit which we have for the shielded twisted pair but higher grades of utp are used in lan technologies like ethernet so basically we use twisted pair uh, unshielded twisted for uh, twisted pair for the lan technologies for the ethernet technology for the internal use where we don't have these environmental factors are affecting us but if suppose you want to put the cable into outside the network outside the land network or maybe suppose you are outside the building you want to connect one building to other building and uh, there is environmental factors are involved in that case we use the shielded to state pair then this uh, unshielded to state pair it consists of two insulating copper wires 1 mm thick the wires are twisted together in a hair helical form to reduce the electrical interference from similar pair so it is it is also it is the same two wires are uh, twisted together it is called that is why it is called twisted pair under the shielded or unshielded both of 1 mm thick cable wire copper wire so that they can reduce the interference from the other wire there is a disadvantages disadvantages of this unshielded twisted pair cable bandwidth is low when compared with coaxial cable and provide less protection from interference because uh, less than coaxial we can say coaxial has a fixed a uh, shield there so it is less uh, it is what uh, it is having less interference and also we get the less bandwidth also because of the wire wires are very thick so uh, actually thin 1 mm is very thin so we are having some limitation of bandwidth also then utp connectors 
The connector used for UTP cable is RJ11 for telephone lines that has four wires. That means only two pairs. And RJ45 for computer networking which has four pairs. That is eight wires. RJ45 connector is most of the time connected to the UTP cable. The job of the connect job of connecting RJ45 connector to UTP cable is called crimping. So when you connect the connector to the cable, that job it is called crimping. So it is said we are doing crimping on it. And these are the connectors. So this is RJ11 connector which is only for the four four wires, two pairs of wires, and RJ11 is for four pairs of wire that is for eleven uh, for eight wires. And for connecting the cable, uh, we use the crimping tool. So doing the crimping, we need a crimping tool like this. This is called crimping tool, and with the help of this crimping tool, we do connect this connector to the cable. In this crimping tool, we have the cable cutter here. Where we can cut the cable outside uh, the shield or uh, the insulator for the from the outside, and then we can make the cable and we can insert the cable here, and then we punch that cable with these two punchers. We have these two punchers here for the different number of wires. These are for RJ11 and this is for RJ45. So you put this connector inside this, and then we press it from here to punch the cable into the wire. Uh, the punch the pin into the wire now wiring is standard now when you are doing crimping when you are doing the crimping then we have to think about the color combination you have to think about the connector how you want to connect the cable so when we try to connect the cable to the rj45 uh, connector then we have to think about this wire standards these wire standards are used to set ethernet cable according to the connection of it between similar or dissimilar devices there are different types of ethernet available now first is straight through cable then we have crossover cable and then we have roll over cable a uh, roll over cable so these are the three standards we have when we are connecting the connector to the cable now this eia and tia electrical industries standard they have they have they have defined the standard here for the connection they have they have defined the standard for the rj45 connector these standards are t568a and t568b are these two wiring standard for rj45 connector data cable specified by tia and eia 568a wiring standard document so the two wiring standards are used to create crossover cable where t568a is used on one end and t568b on the other end and it's and uh, in straight through cable wire and both ends you can use t568a or t568b wiring standard and these are the wiring standards you can see in the image so when we are creating the cable when you are connecting the cable into the connector then we can use these standards to connect these are the pin out standards so under the cable under the pin you will put the cables color like this now we have uh, four pairs four pairs that means eight cables now eight wires have different colors four basic colors are green orange blue and brown these are the four basic color so where you have four cables completely these colors like one cable is completely green one cable is completely orange one cable is completely blue and one cable is completely brown then the other pair of that cable like for green cable there is a pair cable which is paired with that green cable it is actually white cable and in the white cable it is having the green line on stripe on it so white green is combined with the green they are twisted together same as blue and blue white they are stripped together they are uh, 
twisted together then orange and orange white is twisted together and brown and brown white wire a white is twisted together so there are five colors we have we have green blue orange and brown and we have white color so these are the color code for the uh, cables we have the wires we have in the utp cables now when you try to arrange the cable we uh, about the, this is standard i like t568a standard so your cables will start from here from cable 1 to cable 8 it goes like white green first you will add white green that means the white cable which is having the green stripe then you will use the green cable total complete green then you will use white orange then you will use blue then white blue orange white brown and brown this is the standard for t568a defined by ti Uh, TIA EIA 568 standards. Then T568B is start from orange white, orange, white green, blue, then white blue green, and then white brown brown. Now this is the standard we use to create these three type three type of cable: straight through cable, crossover cable, or rolled over cable. So. when you create straight through cable this straight through cable is a type of twisted pair copper wire cable for local area network where the rj45 connector at each end have the same pin out that is arrangement of conductors a straight through cable is also commonly referred to as patch cable however this might be confusing in some situations patch cable also has a border definition that emphasizes the fact that there is a connector on each end rather than the equality of the pin out so it is also sometime some people call it a patch cable but actually patch cable is actually a different cable so you might get confused with this straight through patch cable or another type of patch cable the another type of patch cable is actually having same connector on the both side of the cable uh, actually it is having the connector on each end rather than the equality of pin out so it is having the connector out and at the both of the end it is not like one side you have connector and other side you don't have connector so it is basically have the connector on both sides and it is called patch cable and uh, it is uh, straight through cable is actually having the same color coding from one side to other side so that is why it is also called the patch cable now straight through cable is used to connect computers and other end user devices that example printers to networking devices such as hubs and switches it can also be used to directly connect like devices example two hubs or two switches if the cable is plugged into a uplink port on one but not both of the devices so we can use this straight through cables for basically connecting two different devices two different devices that means if you want to connect your pc or uh, your printer to switches or hubs or your switches to routers then you use this straight through cable we can use this to connect the same device like switch to switch if we use it to plug in into uplink port of the switch so there is a port which is uplink port on the switch so if you connect it from the uplink port to other switch normal port then you can connect it directly also but basically it is not for the same device in simple word it is connecting to two different devices so if ever you want to connect two different devices you want to connect two different devices then you have to use straight through cable and in straight through cable you can see the color coding is same at the both side Same at the both side. That means the number one cable is white orange. So the other side is also white orange. In the one side, it is second cable is orange. So other side it also orange. So the same coding it is used here. Now this one is T five six eight B. As the as as a standard goes, if you see the standard, it is T five six eight B standard. So B standard in one side also, and B standard is both the other side also. If if 
and also if if you are using the A standard in one side, then also you can use the A standard other side also to make the straight straight through cable. It is only that you should have the same cable coding, color coding on both the sides. Then it will become straight through cable. And remember, this is to connect two different devices. Then we have crossover cables. This crossover cable is a type of twisted pair copper wire cable for local area network in which the wire on the cable are crossed over so that the receive signal pins on the RJ45 connector on one end are connected to the transmission signal pins on the RJ45 connector on the other end. This is the opposite of the usual straight through LAN cable and in which the receiver and transmission signal pins on one connector can connect it to the corresponding pins on the other connector. Its purpose is to allow the direct connection of two LAN devices such as two hubs, two switches or hub and switches. It can also be used to create a direct connection between two computers. An alternative to use a crossover cable is to use a hub or switch that has an uplink port. An uplink port is a jack that is a socket for RJ45 connector that reverses the transmission and receives circuits, receiver circuits. Some uplink ports have a switch that allow the user to select the mode of operation. The physical op uh, appearance of crossover cable is generally identical to the to that the straight through cable. So this looks like the same. It looks like same is like a crossover uh, straight through cable. where you have the cable connected with the rg45 connector so it looks similar to this but the color coding is different the color coding is change and re change and it is actually crossed from the straight through cable so you will see one side it will see a straight through cable a straight through uh, standard and other side other side of the cable you will see the crossover you will see the crossover of the color codes now why we use this we use it to connect same devices basically we use this to connect same devices same devices like computer to computer we can connect switch to switch we can connect hub to hub we can connect router to router also so we use this crossover cable to connect two same devices and also it looks like same as a straight through cable only the color coding will be different from the other side one side will be different from the other side so we can say one side we can use t568a standard and other side we can use t568b standard so when you use a standard in one side and b standard in other side so basically it becomes the crossover cable and this is how the crossover cable coding so one side the one first cable will be orange white then other side it will be green white then second cable will be orange other side it will be green then third cable will be white green the other cable will be other side will be white orange now fourth one is same like blue blue and fifth one is also same white blue white blue then again sixth cable will be changed from green to orange and then white brown seventh cable will be same and eighth cable will be same white brown brown and here also white brown brown so you can see the first second third and sixth cable is changing from one side to other side and you can see this is the standard of t568a and the other side it is t568b standard now roll over cable A rollover cable is a network cable that connects a computer terminal to a network router's console port. It is also referred to as a Cisco console cable and is normally flat and light blue so as a dis as as to distinguish it from other network cable types. The pin out on one end of the cable are reversed from the opposite end which is how the cable derived its name rollover cable. Now rollover cables are also known as Yost cables or Yost serial device wiring standard connectors. Rollover cables primarily connect a device to a switch or router's console port. This permits an engineer or programmer to connect to the network device and manipulate the programming as required. All the many network programmers tasks can be can now 
be centrally completed there remains the need for technician to use a rollover cable for network hardware and upgrades maintenance and troubleshooting so basically this rollover cable uh, it is only it is not used for data communication remember it is not for the data communication in the network it is used for only connecting the routers or switches console port there is a uh, there is a switch uh, there is a console port in every router and switches managed router and switches where you can connect the console port with the rollover cable and then you connect the other end in your machine in your computer's terminal port terminal port it is actually the serial port you have in your computer so you connect that port into the one port one one side it will be connected to the console port of routers and switches and the other side it will connect it to the uh, computer serial port and then through that net through that cable you can access your routers and switches and you can access and you can configure those routers and switches and actually once you have configured once you program then you can use the network normal network connection to connect them and centralize manage the all devices but suppose the first time when you connect the router and if you are upgrading the hardware if you are doing the maintenance and troubleshooting then you have to physically connect that router and switches directly and for that you need this rollover cable now the cable also has the wires same wires like same color codings also so how to differentiate between normal straight through or crossover cable and rollover cable these cables are flat they comes as a flat cable and also they are having a different light blue color so that we can differentiate between the normal crossover cable and straight through cable but it only used for the connecting the router switches console port to machines terminal that is serial to serial port now where it gets the rollover name because the cables are roll over from one side to other side that means if suppose the one side has the pin name uh, the color coding from 1 to 6 like 8 like this then the other side it will be reversed like the it will go from 8 to 1 now there is no standard here there is no t5 6 8, 8 a or b standard here it is simply reverse then first side so whatever color code you use from uh, from the one side you have to just reverse it from the other side and it is become it becomes a roll over cable and this is how it looks as you can see here it is in light blue flat cable now one side you have rj45 connector which will connect the console port of router switches and the other side it is fixed with this serial port this serial port where you can connect it from your pc serial port now it comes fixed like this you can also make it like in this you have to connect this serial port or if you are ha don't have this fixed cable or uh, fixed port serial port there then you can do what you can uh, uh, make the port uh, uh, rj45 port and then you can convert you can use the convert so you can use the uh, converter from rj45 to the serial port now there is a problem here in nowadays nowadays most of the machines or all of the machines don't have this serial port because the serial port was designed for the other devices so it used for many other devices like for the game controller even for the mouse and keyboards was used for the was uh, using this serial port to connect the machine but nowadays most of the devices are comes with usb port so usb is very common now and every computer uses the usb to connect any devices like mouse keyboard any device most of the devices are use usb now so nowadays any pc don't have this serial port available so if you buy the new pc the serial ports are not there so because they everything is switched to the usb port so now we have the console port for the ua is as a usb also so as a usb that means the one end remains the rj45 where you will connect it to the uh, console port of uh, switches and routers and the other end is a usb port so that you can connect that port to the usb port of your machine and you can access your routers and switch uh, your switches and routers console 
to configure the router and switches. Then next we have coaxial cable. This coaxial cables or COX is also called COX is a type of network cable that has an inner conductor surrounded by a tubular insulating layer which is again surrounded by a tubular conducting shield. Now many time, many a time coaxial cables also have an insulating outer jacket or seat. The word coaxial is derived from the structure, structure of the cable that is the inner conductor and the outer shield sharing a geometric axis. In year 1880, Oliver Heavist, English engineer and uh, mathematician patented the design of coaxial cable. When Ethernet based lines make using a thick coaxial cable for interconnection is referred as thick net in bus topology. So Ethernet network where thinner coaxial cables are used, it is referred as thin net. Now thick net is also referred as 10 base 5, 10 base 5 systems where 10 means 10 Mbps speed for data transmission and receiving and base means baseband and 5 indicates the maximum distance between host that carries the data that is 500 meters. RJ8-U cable is used as thick cable in thick net base LAN network that is in bus topology and thin net is also referred as 10 base 2 where is 2 indicates 200 meters of maximum distance between two hosts. RJ58 slash U is used as thin cable, thin net ca thin cable in thin net based LAN network. For attaching coaxial cable to the device, we have to use BNC connector, which has the has to be crimped by a player. By a player, coaxial cable standards are RJ59 it impedance 75 ohm and it is used for cable TV. Nowadays, if you see the cable TV, dish TV, they use the coaxial cable. It is RJ59. Now for the bus topology, we use RJ58 cable that is 50 ohm and it is thin net, thin ethernet. Then RJ11, RG11 which is 50 ohm again for the thick ethernet. Now this coaxial cable, thin and thick cable are used in uh, were used in the bus topology but now in bus topology we don't use we use the star topology so in a star topology the cable used is the category cable and this is how it looks the thin net coaxial cable uh, thick uh, thin net where you can see the outside insulation thin net and thick net both are same first you have outside insulation then you have copper mesh then again you have again insulation then you will get the copper wire both thin net and thick net are same only the thin net is smaller than the thick net then the cable connector we use connector to the connect the cable is the BNC connector it is called BNC connector where there is only one pin point to connect the single cable we have one cable like female connector and male connector so you can connect it from two devices so male connector will connect into the female BNC connector now so that means one end will be the male connector the other end will be female connector so that you can connect to each other now the next is what fiber optic cable Fiber optic cable. Fiber optic cable is a cable that has one or more optical fibers that are used to carry data in the form of light. Fiber optic cable consists of a core and a cladding layer with a different reflection, a refraction index that reflects the light back into the core. The jacket fiber is generally enclosed with a bundle of flexible uh, fibrous polymer strength members like armit that is tuaron or kevlar in a lightweight plastic cover to form a simple cable which is then sheeted 
इन पी वी सी और पी पी वी सी और क्लिनोम एज फाइबर ऑप्टिक केबल ट्रांसमिट्स डिजिटल सिग्नल यूजिंग लाइट इम्पल्स नॉट सिमिलर टू अदर केबल दैट यूजेज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ड्यू टू लाइट इम्पल्सेज द डेटा इज इम्यून टू इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक इंटरफेरेंस एंड रेडियो फ्रीक्वेंसी इंटरफेरेंस द ऑप्टिकल फाइबर एलिमेंट्स आर टिपिकली इंडिविजुअली कोटेड विद प्लास्टिक लेयर्स एंड कंटेंट इन अ प्रोटेक्टिव ट्यूब सूटेबल फॉर द इन्वायरमेंट वेर द केबल विल बी डिप्लॉय सो दिस फाइबर ऑप्टिक केबल यूज द लाइट फॉर सेंडिंग द सिग्नल नॉट एज द कॉपर वायर दिट यूज द डी इलेक्ट्रिक सिग्नल एंड बिकॉज इट इज नॉट यूजिंग इलेक्ट्रिक सिग्नल इट इज इम्यून फ्रॉम द इंटरफेरेंस फ्रॉम इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक और रेडियो फ्रीक्वेंसी बिकॉज इट इज यूजिंग लाइट एज ए सिग्नल सो इट इज वॉट इट इज एक्चुअली हैविंग अ ट्यूब लाइट ट्यूबलर वी कैन से द ट्यूब इन साइड द केबल विच इज मेड बाई द फाइब्रस पॉलीमर which reflects the light so that the light signal can go from one end to other end now there are different type of uh fiber optic cables are there so different types of cables are used for different applications for example long distance commun telecommunication or providing the high speed data connection between different parts of the building the cable itself comes in either single mode or multi mode fiber single mode fiber and multi mode fiber the difference between single mode fiber and multi mode fiber is in the number of light rays that is the number of signals the fiber optic cable can carry multi mode fiber is most often used for shorter distance shorter distance application and single mode fiber for spanning long distance applications advantages of this fiber optic cable no electro electromagnetic interference and radio frequency interference the data can be carried up to 40 kilometers that is up to 25 miles since the fiber is dielectric it does not present a spark hazard then fiber optic cable provides bandwidth up to 10 gbps because we know that light is very fast and these are the fiber optic cables as we can see these are single mode and multi mode fiber optic cables these are different cables and to connect those cables we use these fiber optic connectors then there are some disadvantages of fiber optic cables also first is installation is not so easy it's very difficult cost is also high as compared to other cables and actually it is very high fiber can be broken or have transmission losses when wrapped around curves of only a few centimeter radius now remember it uses the reflection technology reflection of light to send the data so for sending the data it do what it reflects the signals inside the cable and for that it has a glass coating inside the cable now it is like a glass coating and suppose if you uh if you wrap around if you curve around a centimeter few centimeter radius then that glass can be broken and you can get this scratch on that glass even a hairline a hairline scratch is we uh, it will lose the data and the data may be lost because the reflection will be redirected or somewhere as uh, it will not reach the destination and again it is very difficult to troubleshoot you will not understand where it is going where it is broken or where the data is where the uh, glass is broken or where is the scratch so it is very difficult to do the troubleshooting also and for troubleshooting such cable the equipment used are also more expensive so it is an expensive technology to do the installation is is very expensive then again if suppose you want to maintain it and troubleshoot it then again it is also very difficult because the devices are also very expensive so we have coaxial cable we have twisted pair cable and we have fiber optic cable in twisted pair cable we have three uh, standards that is uh, uh straight through crossover and rollover 
Now I will explain why we use straight through and crossover cable. Now suppose we are using the straight through cable, or even if we are using the uh, crossover cable, uh, in this twisted cable, we have these four cables are important. Actually, one, two, three, and four. These four cables are for sending and receiving the data. Other cables are used for signaling and power. So basically, for sending the data, it uses these four cables: two cables for sending the data and two cables for receiving the data. Now, when we use a straight-through cable, we use this to different devices. Now, different devices. For example, this is one side we have PC, and other side we have switch. now because they are different devices remember they work differently so because they are different devices they will work differently so for example pc sends the data on uh, port na cable number 1 and 2 and receive the data on cable number 3 and 6 so switch will work differently so big so uh, maybe the switch will receive the data on 1 and 2 and sends the data on 3 and 6 so what we do here for connecting these different devices we use a straight through cable and for straight through cable what we do we connect 1 to 1 Two to two, three to three, and six to six straightly. So what happened? PCs, uh, PC will send the data from one to, and switch will receive the data from one to, and the switch will send data from three six, and the PC will receive the data from three six. So it goes straight. So we use straight through cable. now if we are using the same cable same devices if we want to connect the same devices now if we have both devices same that means pc in one end and the other end also we have pc now remember if the both devices are same so they will work similar similar means if pc is sending the data from uh, one and two and receiving the data from 3 and 6 so other one will also do the same thing so this piece this is also pc so it will also do the same thing it will also send the data to from 1 and 2 and receive the data from 3 and 6 now in this case if suppose we use the straight through cable then what happened the pc pc will send the data from 1 to 1 and 2 to 2 now what happen this pc will also send the data from 1 to and this pc will also send the data from 1 to and the data will be collide it will be collusion there and then no data will be received by any other pc so we can't do that and that is why we use what crossover cable so if we use the straight through cable then what happen though both devices will never get the data because they are trying to send the data on the same cable so what we do here we use cross cross over cable we use cross over cable now cross over cable that means what we do here we join 1 to 6 and the second cable we join to Uh, six. The one will go to third one, and the second one will go to sixth one. From this side and also from this side. And that is why it is called cross because it is crossing the cable. Now what happened? Because the same devices are there, so it will send the data from one and two, and the data will go on to receive from the other device from three and six because we have crossed the cable. and from this device also when data will be sent from 1 to it will go and uh, reach to this third and sixth and as you see the cable color coding you will see that the first cable will go to the 
in the other end it is it will go to the third line and the second cable from the first end will go to the sixth in the second uh, second end let's see that so when we check this color coding here as we can see easily that side one inside one the first cable is white orange and the other side the white orange is on number 3 and in the first side the second cable is orange and the other side it goes on to sixth number and same as from this side the white green from the other side the first cable it is going here on the third side a uh, third number and the second number green it is going here on sixth number so it is crossing these four cables and other cables are remain same same like blue is on four blue white is on five and then uh, brown white is on seven and brown is on eight so other cables are same only these four cables are crossing each other and that is why it is what crossover cable and we use it for same devices then cross rollover cable is completely different it is not used for the data it is used for community connecting your console port to the uh, machines serial port to do the configuration of the routers and switches then fiber optic cable uses light as a signal now what it do actually this is it is like the tube and inside it is having the reflection coating so when you uh, one end you will use the led or laser signal so when you light up this light it goes on to reflect like this and it will reach to the other end and the other end we have receiver and then other end also has the sender so it will send the light signal to this side and then this side you will receive the receiver now it is very difficult to uh, it is very expensive and difficult to uh, installation and also troubleshooting is very difficult if suppose this light uh, here this mirror coating is scratched here then what happen your signal will reflect somewhere else like it will reflect here and there and then it will never reach the destination so detecting uh, this small problem can be a big loss so the whole cable will be unusable then also for detecting it and for doing the troubleshooting it and for fixing it also because suppose you want to join two cables from here then also you have to use a very expensive devices to join the cable because you can't have a very thin very 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 thin uh, mismatch here or scratch here in between this uh, layer of coating so if it is there then the signals will reflect everywhere and it will not reach the destination then we have single mode and multi mode fiber cable single mode that means only one signal will go through and multi mode that means the multiple signals can go through in a single cable multi cables multi mode that multiple signals that means it will change the frequency of cable uh, frequency of the light like a uh, length frequency length of the light like like this one is this length so other one can go like this small wavelength then other signal can use long wavelength so it can use it for the multiple signals for the same cable now when you use multi multi mode signal uh, fiber optic then it is not made for the long distance it is for the short distance and single mode we can use for the long distance it can go up to very long distance so these are the transmission medium we have these are the transmission medium we have and these are the different type of transmission medium we have we have a uh, two state pair we have coaxial we have fiber optic we have wireless and in that we have different types of two state pair and we have a different type of uh, uh, fiber optic then we have coaxial and then uh, these are all used to transfer the data from one end to other end 